sadly, we've seen an increase in harassment and hate crimes fueled by anti-Asian racism over the past year. This can be attributed to the absolutely disgusting and abhorrent anti-Asian rhetoric uh, that's been spouted off uh, since the beginning of the pandemic. If you witness someone being harassed, there are things you can do as a bystander to intervene without escalating the situation. And if you hear anti-Asian racist remarks, speak up and shut it down. Strategies and resources for this will be down in the description. I had an idea for a project, so I started working on the project. I'm really interested in automation and music technology right now. Uh, after building the robot's xylophone, playing with Eurorack, and you know, working on like generative stuff, uh, it's just really what's kind of burrowed into my brain, uh, for better or worse. So I knew, especially after the robot's xylophone and then further, I, I wanted to build another robotic instrument at some point. And over the summer, then I did work on some drumming robots. It was kind of this modular system that could mount to whatever percussive surface you had. Uh, however, I did 3D print the parts, which were beautifully designed by Nay, and I wrote the code, but I didn't actually build it or talk about it, make a video about it, because uh, I was going through a hard time uh, in the summer. Sorry, Winnie needs lots of pats. She is also having a hard time. But recently, I had been wanting to explore instruments that aren't normally roboticized. Um, percussion, it's ideal for robotics, but, uh, you know, why not explore other avenues? I'd been really inspired by Sam Underwood's work. Uh, he does a lot of creative music technology creations um, and has been sharing a lot in regards to woodwinds and brass, which you don't normally see, and what he's doing is just, it's really cool. So, I began a rigid search of my own. How could I approach and build a woodwind instrument robot? And I think it'd be easier to show you uh, rather than just talk about here, so let, let's move over there, okay? Right over there. So, first off, I'd like to think I'm relatively self-aware, so let me begin by saying, this is silly. <laughs> this is a very silly thing, uh, but I'd like to think it's, it's fun and, you know, if it all ends up working, it, it might be kind of cool, but still silly. Like, we are acknowledging that this is silly. This is a plastic recorder. Uh, if you went through the public school system in the United States, there's a good chance you learned how to play this in the second or third grade, you know, around there. They get the young pups uh, playing these and music teachers have to take them home and wash them in their dishwasher. It's like a whole thing. This is an air pump. It, you know, it pumps air. My thought was that the pump could blow air into the recorder to make it sound. Uh, and that is working as a result of this 3D printed mount. See how there are these clips here on either side. I took measurements to figure out the ideal heights relative uh, to the recorder and motor. See, the motor is mounted a little higher than the recorder, so it's centered at the um, embouchure. Uh, originally, I was thinking a gasket. I printed these flex filament thingy blobs. Uh, they did not work at all. Um, this was the first one. See here, I was thinking the recorder goes in here, that mounts on there. And I was like, well, hold on, we can just make it shorter. We can make the recorder bit actually go into the gasket, nice and firm wasn't working. I was like, oh, I'll make it shorter. Still wasn't, but so I found the best airflow was actually happening once I took it out of the mount. Um, so, and really the ideal tone is achieved when it's like four to six millimeters away from the pump with open air. So the next step is different notes. Uh, of course, a recorder has these holes. Uh, they're covered. Uh, the more holes are covered, the lower the, the pitch. My thought uh, was to use these tiny solenoids again. They're the same ones I used for the xylophone uh, and what's happening is that the solenoid pushes down on this little flexy bit here uh, that are able to kind of rest into the holes to cover them. And the one reason I was like, well that'll work is because this gasket did such a good job at stopping the air from going into the recorder. So I was like, well perfect, cover the holes, great. 
And this whole thing is a result of a fairly involved 3D print. Uh, there's this mounting tray, you can see it's another clip on top of the recorder. And then uh, there are these tall mounts, let's call them trees, uh, that hold on to the solenoid, two screws. Uh, and then the flexi nubbins there attached to a tray, which is attached, and the tray, it kind of kind of looks like a power line. Um, that's held in midair by mounting to the front here of the, the solenoid tree. So it's fairly involved. Um, I, I haven't done a lot of modeling like this, but uh, I'm, I'm excited of how it's come out. Now I don't have the code or circuit set up yet for the solenoid. You'll see it's just kind of hanging out. Oh, need some stability <laughs> still added. Um, but in theory, it should work based on this manual operation. <laughs> Now let's go back over to the synth shelf uh, so that we can finish chatting. Yep, right back over here. Cool, thanks. The idea as this thing evolves is that it would be MIDI controlled. Uh, so that like, you would press a note on the keyboard and the correct solenoids would press down to affect the, uh, the note on the recorder and also blow air from the pump. I learned a lot uh, working on the robot's xylophone as if you've been watching for a while, you you know all too well. Uh, I feel like I can apply those lessons to this robot. I feel like I'm already just in the first draft and approach at it is I'm making better strides than I did on my first draft with the robot xylophone. So that's it's progress. I learned things. Before I wrap this up, uh, I want to talk about another project idea that someone had that they then decided to work on. The Pionora is a Raspberry Pi compute module carrier board by Timon. It's in the form factor of an Arduino and breaks out key components and connections for the Pi, such as full-size HDMI, M.2, it even has an MCP3008 ADC. Uh, there, there's a lot going on here. It's, it's very impressive. It's a crowd supply campaign right now, and Timon is a buddy, so I wanted to spread the word. He actually talked about it on the episode of MakerCast that I hosted back in December. So it's been great to see the project grow and his hard work pay off. Everything begins as an idea, serious, silly, or otherwise. Thank you for watching. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.